Hey everybody, welcome. Today I have been gifted an old Hewlett Packard Model 200 CD wide range oscillator. So it's a signal generator basically. Uh, give me sine wave anyway as an oscillator. So I've been given it because it's dead and the uh, suspicion was that it will probably need to get the capacitors changed, but we'll have to look at it and see if I can find the schematic online. But for right now, quickly, I'm just going to crack it open and take a look and let you guys see it as well. So we'll come back after the cut with it open up. We can take a peek and then I will go to the next step of looking up a schematic and see if we can figure out how to get it working. Because this will work great for me checking out amps, being able to put an input signal and see how that works out. So hopefully that's something that you guys will be interested in as well as I am. All right, so that was pretty easy. I just took two screws out and the whole top part slid off. So let's kind of, you can see the front has a control to adjust the frequency and a few other knobs here. We'll, we'll be cleaning those up and whatnot, but let's take a look at the tube complement. We've got some big filter caps here. My suspicion is those may need to be changed. And that was one of the indications that the gentleman that uh, traded this out to, or gave this out to me for. But tube wise, there's not a lot ton going on on this side. We've got a, a 5AR4 rectifier right here. We have an EL86 or 6C W5, and there's a pair of those, V4 and V2. And then if I turn it around, we have, now these are some air capacitors that are used for tuning that, but we've got a 6AU6 and a 6AU6, two of those, and a couple of little light bulbs here, one's called RT1 and KT2. I'll look those up and see if I can find them, but obviously these air, air gap type capacitors are what's used for tuning the frequency. Very large power transformer there, of course, to provide power to the tubes, and we've got another transformer down here that hooks into something else as well. So there's some, but there's a whole bunch of components in here. This is a different bank of different, um, what look like power resistors and whatnot to kind of adjust the things that way. I don't know enough about the schematic to talk intelligently about it. I'll have to actually get that first, but we're just, I'm just taking a peek internally. We can turn it this way and see a board down here. That's got some resistors. Looks like an inductor or a choke or whatever. And then a couple of very large, 0.5 microfarad large capacitors as well. I might have to test those and see if those are bad and replace them as well. But most of this is some pretty passive stuff. We've got a couple of trimmers here. One says hum balance and one has dynamic balance adjust on it. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's ridiculously complex. So I may very well, um, what a lot of people will do with these kind of old capacitors is just snip off the leads of them if they'll pull them out and put in a nowadays these capacitors are so much smaller they're just going to put it in line there directly connected into the things that they need it for but i will have to take a test and look at that when we get to that moment i and, I, and then uh, as, if those look like they're okay i could potentially bring them up on the very x slowly to let it reform the electrolyte against the or inside of it uh, but uh Generally, especially as old as this model is, this, this would probably be shot and just need to be replaced, so it might be just smarter for me to do it. I see what appears to be three large capacitors here. One in the back here, one here, and one here. This is a single cap can, only has two connections, a ground and then the main output for it. But this one is a, uh, it looks like it might have one, two, three, four different ones, but I'm not sure. Unless this is a route to ground, but again, with, with the schematic I'll see, and then another uh, dual one back there. So. There you have it. We will uh, get a schematic and look it over and see what we can do to get this thing running. So we'll be back shortly. Okay. Hello, everybody. So uh, now that you've had that little bit of an intro of what this all is about, I wanted to show a quick brief view of the schematic. I'm not an expert of the schematic, so I won't dig into a lot of detail. I just wanted to show the general areas that I'm trying to troubleshoot in this one. Uh, we've got a, a four tube amp that does oscillation and then uh, has the ability to control the frequency. Um, one of the switches I pointed to is this switch range assembly here. It has five settings that are mapped up here. There's times 110, 100, 1K, and 10K. So that gets you different frequencies um, in bands. So you have a big dial that goes from, say, 0 to 6, but that would be, you know, if it was 1, it was 0 to 6 hertz, and then the 10 range, it would be 10 to 60, etc. So each range just gives you a little bit higher range that you can cover. Uh, and then the, you know, the that dial was adjusting the capacitance and I believe that maybe this this these three right here that we saw the bare large those are the air gap type ones 
Uh, and then it also uses these lamps that you saw that I pointed to as well for part of that as well that are pretty cool, uh, that they somehow use that lamp as a constant current sink, I think, if I remember understanding right. Again, I could be mistaking this. I, I'm definitely no expert in this stuff. So uh, this is one of those areas that I'm still learning. The main, capa uh, the main transformer is here through that 5AR4 rectifier, and then the main electrolytics are these three, 10 microfarad and then a 40 microfarad. And there's one other electrolytic that's this 100 microfarad. Um, and of note as well are these two, there's, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, C10 and C11 are um, a couple of microcapacitors that you'll see later are important, but for now I won't discuss it too much. But the other amazingly cool thing about this service manual that I have, it also has a list of every single component so you can go find a, comp a comparable replacement. Uh, and I do want to thank and give a shout out to one of the four members on EL34 World for helping me find this. He had quite a few uh, different ones on hand and some of these varied from version to version so you had to know exactly which you know serial number I had but that was able to narrow it down for us so uh, yeah so effectively if you have one of these kinds of things quite often these older generations will have a, a service manual that you can find and, and get the exact detail and it will help you calibrate the device find out what's wrong with it there's like troubleshooting steps etc luckily I didn't have to because I had somebody right there that uh, on the forums that helped me figure out quickly what was going on so We'll continue with this and uh, hopefully discuss uh, in a way that makes sense what I did to get this thing working. Okay, so you've probably seen at this point now, I've kind of showed that I have the actual schematic, the full thing online is available from HP, it's awesome. So uh, I've pulled out the transformer and the choke on this side, you can't see it, but because I wanted to get into where I can see the capacitors. I've re ordered replacements for all the filter capacitors, except one I already had, which I've got a 40 microfarad, 500 volt uh, Sprague Atom. I'm just going to try to figure out how to fit them in here, but this one's going to replace C14, uh, and then I will have, this is 310 at, at 450, and then there's also a uh, 100 at 100 volts here. So I'm going to replace all of those, and then we should be good to go. So uh, we will come back one, through the magic of video once I have those parts in, and we'll try and replace them, and then we'll try and power it up and see how it works in there. So we'll see you then. All right, so I have finished this up. I've got... Um a bundle of 310 microfarad at 100 volts here, a 40 microfarad at 500 volts there that replaced the main ones. There's a smaller 100 at 10, kind of down at the bottom there. I need to try and anchor them down, but I wanted to get them done, but that still didn't solve the problem. So I did a little bit of troubleshooting. I'd, I read somewhere online that one of the culprits could be these little mica capacitors. The old ones were the kind of, what they'll call domino style like this. I took those out. One of them tested out as okay, but the other one tests as a dead short to ground. So, and it was the one on the left side over there, that back corner one right there. So, um, I have now replaced those and they are in good shape. I turned it on it works. So we'll give you a quick audio demo of that. Come around here to this side, turn it on and let, give it a second to warm up. All right. She's warming up. Oh, and there she goes. So the tubes are warm up and output, and I can adjust the dial. And there's a fine adjust here. I might not be in great connection down there. But we're in business. I now have a nice signal generator. This is just called an oscillator because all it does is a sine wave. You can't do complicated stuff, but that's okay. That's all I need for amp testing is just a sine wave input that I know the exact input values and what the output should be afterwards. So got it working. Took a little bit of help with the guys in the forums, but uh, you can also kind of see the guts of this guy. It's kind of cool. I'll point out what it, what is what. Since I've got it on power, I'm gonna get my chopstick out. This is a the kind of that selection array where you choose between uh, 100, whatever the the, the settings are 1, 10, 100, 1000, I think. It's just different frequency ranges, and they have kind of just voltage dividers across those, breaking up the signal into those different levels. So it inputs it in at one level, but depending on which one of these settings you have, it, it lowers it or raises it. And then we have here, we have a choke, a large choke for the power filtering right there. This is a secondary transformer for low frequency ranges. This is a, a transformer for high frequency ranges. And under here, this is the power transformer. Um, the the, the power filtering, there's a rectifier, if you can see this, let me come around, there's a rectifier tube socket right there. And right here we have the power rectification I mentioned. The one you can see, if you can kind of see me tapping that down at the very bottom, that one, these all need to be kind of anchored down now that it's working, but 
Uh, and then I thought maybe this green resistor was a problem, but it turned out not to be. But we've got some other basic circuit stuff here that's got some inductors and some balancing resistors. There's a few more uh, adjustment resistors here, but uh, it looks like it's working for me. So I'm pretty stoked about that as well. So there you have it, guys. This is one of those kinds of things that didn't take too much effort with a little bit of help online from some of my friends. So uh, if you guys are looking for something that's uh, a great little tool for the job, this is going to be upside down, but it's an HP model 200 cd wide range oscillator so uh, i was given it and gifted it but uh, i uh, think that you guys could possibly also find one online for pretty cheap so let me know what you think in the comments thanks